Mattel just keeps getting better and better with their Motu Masterverse line, improving figures wave after wave after wave. And Wave 5 looks to continue that trend, giving us characters across the wide spectrum of the Masters of the Universe lore. So does this wave continue that trend of improvements? Well, let's unbox and share my thoughts of Wave 5 of Masters of the Universe Masterverse figures from Mattel. Hello everybody and welcome to Geek Dad Life. It's your host, Jay Gladfelter here. It has been great seeing the growth of the Masterverse toy line from Mattel. At first it featured characters from the Masters of the Universe Revelation TV series from Netflix, but very quickly it started adding some different properties to the toy line, which I think just improves the overall approach, improves the diversity of characters that we're getting, and has really allowed them to kind of push the boundaries and I think make better figures along the way so i am pumped with what we're getting here in wave five we have a new Eternia figure featuring zodak as the character really excited about that actually out of all of the things they've done with masterverse i think for most people the new Eternia figures uh, are the ones they are most excited about we have our first princess of power figure in the masterverse toy line we have katra we also have a deluxe shira figure uh showing up right now as well and then we have two figures from the new CGI He-Man series from Netflix, which was a bit of a shocker because we already have a, a really fun uh, toy line for the CGI show. These figures are, you know, a little over 10 bucks a piece, but now we're getting kind of collector level versions of the characters from the CGI show. So I really love what we're seeing here with Wave 5. I love that we're getting these different characters and truly earning the Masterverse title that they have given to this toy line. I've always had a soft spot for Zodak. He's kind of an interesting character in the original toy line. He's an eight-back, one of the first figures released with the toy line, but he had kind of a murky background. He was, you know, evil early on in the toy line. That's why he has the kind of the webbed feet, like the evil characters. But later on, he became more of a neutral character. And he's just kind of got a funky design. I've always really liked the figure. What really made me love the Cosmic Enforcers was the Zodak with a K in the 2000 and X series. That's my favorite Cosmic Enforcer. Real quick look at the packaging. I'm not a huge fan fan of the front of these boxes, even though I do love the little 40th anniversary He-Man sticker. I do love the new Eternia logo, but I love that we have more Nate Barch art being added to these figures. Love the side profile art here, as well as the art on the back. Look, you even have this kind of uh, in red shadow gray skull back there. That's really cool. But, uh, you know, it seems like he's doing more and more of the card backs on these figures. So I'm excited uh, that we're getting that here with this Zodak. So one of my favorite things about the new Eternia releases so far is they've given us these, you know, different looks of the characters, like definitely being inspired by the classic designs, but not being afraid to do something a little bit different, whether they're pulling from earlier artwork concept designs into the figure or giving us something new like we're seeing here with this Zodak figure. So we're getting shoulder pads that clip onto to the back of his classic, you know, uh, cosmic enforcer armor. I love uh, that design that is incorporated here. I love that he has a holster as well. That is super cool. I love his unique loincloth, which is pretty neat, even though mine seems to uh, be a bit off center in terms of the actual finished figure, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, I also love that he's getting, you know, the Skeletor clawed webbed feet, which is a callback to the original character as well as having, you know, the Skeletor arms, which again is, you know, what they did with the original figure because he was supposed to be a bad guy back then. Um, but eventually he became a neutral to neutral good uh, character in the series. As far as accessories, he's got his classic Zodak gun. He's actually the only character in the original wave of figures to actually have a gun type weapon, this laser gun. The rest uh, had more of the sword and sorcery stuff, which again is another cool thing, unique thing about this character. And then he has the staff, which, you know, Zodak with a K featured, uh, but I love that his staff kind of can break into two and then be a longer kind of bow staff. I think that's really cool. Let's see how easily we can uh, make it one full staff. That's pretty awesome. Um, so I, I love that we're getting that here uh, with this figure. Uh, in my mind, if it's Zodak with a C, he should have his kind of laser pistol. So that's probably how I uh, will display him. Um, but still, he's just really freaking cool. You know, a character that often gets overlooked from the original toy line 
um, I think is made way cooler here. And I got to be completely honest, I didn't really dig the shoulder pads that they added to the new Eternia He-Man. Uh, but I kind of like the look of them here. You, know, you can kind of joke he looks like a football player. Um, but for me, I think they're really cool. And I love how they, they did them. So you can kind of just weep the shoulder pads back if you want to. Uh, and, you know, not display them, which, you know... Uh, that's probably not how you'd want to do it, but you can just easily sweep them back. Maybe you can pretend this is like a rocket launcher or something, but uh, or you can just take them off and then you can put uh, his two uh, pieces of his, you know, bow staff or his Zodak staff uh, back there as well if you want to. So again, I, I think there's a lot of display options with this figure. It matches, you know, what we have seen with the other new Eternia figures so far. Uh, this Zodak is awesome. Love that we got the trigger finger here with his ray gun. And again, just a really nice entry in addition to the Masterverse toy line. All right, next up is Catra. The only difference to the front of the box is we got the Princess of Power logo right there in the front, which looks great. Again, love that we're getting some Nate Barch art here. And this Catra art is so freaking good. Like this could, you know, be a poster. You know, it looks so freaking awesome. Um, uh, this this side one especially just looks so cool. Um, but the back as well. She just looks absolutely badass. And again, Nate Barch just, oh, the, the best of the best. Let's open up this Catra. All right, getting Catra out of the box. You know, I'll readily admit I'm not the biggest Princess of Power fan, but this Catra figure looks fantastic. I love the purple of her soft goods cape here, and it looks fantastic. You know, I know some people don't like the soft goods. They prefer the, that kind of rubber plastic cape, but it just looks so much better to my eyes than, you know, the hard plastic capes uh, that were very popular in the Motu Classics line. But really, her head sculpt looks fantastic and the paint applications look fantastic as well. Um, really, this is just a, a sharp figure. Uh, in terms of articulation, everything is working as it should. It's a little wobbly in the waist, um, but it doesn't detract from the overall functionality of the figure. Um, but the paint applications, really everything just looks super uh, sharp with this figure. And again, the, the double jointed elbows don't look too out of place. Like they're sculpted really well here, uh, as well as the knees. Sometimes I feel like they look uh, completely out of place, which is why I generally prefer just the single jointed uh, elbows and knees, but they actually look pretty good here. And I love how they handled her mask. So you can actually kind of just slide it down or you should be able to there you go in front of her eyes and then pull it above her eyes if you want to because uh, they kind of just have these grooves along the side of her head so you can kind of adjust up and down uh, how you want the mask now it does have that kind of problem that the original Shira figure in the classics line had where there's you know this this big uh, uh, hole on the side of her head uh, but it's not as ridiculous as the Shira one and really if you're going to display you're going to display her one way or another with the mask on um, but really love that here in terms of her accessories we got this great shield with this little uh, jewel at the center I think that looks really cool we also got her sweet scepter here with some nice green paint applications. We've got some extra hands, which these are pretty functional extra hands. I also think we got the little uh, painted nails on there as well. I think that's really cool. Again, just nice attention to detail with this Catra figure. Um, I don't know how I'm going to display her yet. I do just like, you know, the, the kind of the claw-like hands on the Catra uh, being displayed, but I'll, I'll kind of play around with it to see how I end up displaying it. But this figure is absolutely fantastic. Um, the sculpting, the paint applications, the accessories. This is a really, really good Princess of Power figure. I don't have the she yet, but having this catch up makes me really excited to get her uh, added to my collection as well. All right, now we're gonna go to the CGI He-Man toys, starting with this He-Man figure. Really excited about this one. And the figure is huge. Like just in terms of plastic weight, it is significantly heavier than any other Masterverse figure so far, save for that, that uh, new Eternia Beast Man. Uh, but again, some, I, you know, did Nate Barch do this art? I'd have to double check. Uh, it looks like he could because it actually has a really nice quality to it, even though it does look like it just comes right off the screen from the CGI show. Um, but excited to get this He-Man because I do really dig the character designs of 
uh, the new CGI He-Man show. It's something different. I've enjoyed the show uh, immensely as well as uh, my kids have enjoyed it too. I've gotten a few different versions of the CGI He-Man from their you know main retail toy line. And while I do think they are perfectly serviceable, they're really light in the paint app department. So, you know, while I think you're getting a perfectly good toy version of the CGI He-Man, you can just tell the difference here how much detail is left off of the main retail release figures versus this Masterverse figure. And I gotta say, not only does the paint outpace the regular retail release for the CGI He-Man, but the sculpting is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it looks like he jumps right off the screen. That head sculpt looks great. And most of the other details look pretty good as well. I gotta say the green is a little bit sloppy. Um, it's not super crisp like we saw with that Catra figure, but still it looks really, really good. I'm excited to have this figure. And look at how much detail was added to his power sword. It looks fantastic. It's kind of a silver paint with this more muted white silver in the background, uh, all painted over this kind of gold plastic, which I think looks really, really good. He has two extra hands. They're both fists. One of mine did have a paint smudge, which is a bummer, but I don't plan on using uh, those extra hands. Um, all right, so the thing with this figure or this character design, it is top heavy. Uh, not Bruce Tim top heavy, but it is top heavy. So I was curious to see how this thing could support itself under its own uh, weight. And there's a, there's a moment of truth. And it, it's doing a pretty good job. This is a very uh, unstable table that I do these reviews on and things fall over very easily. Um, more so than my normal display. But he actually displays very well. In terms of articulation, he's got a ton, which is what you can expect from the Masterverse figures. Um, and yeah, there's really no uh, point in this that seems lesser than any of the Masterverse articulation. He just looks fantastic. Fantastic. Let's get his power sword in his hands, his big old hands. They even gave him like a little extra palm there to be able to hold his sword, which is kind of silly. Um, but yeah, he just, he looks great. And I gotta say, while I have been buying the regular retail releases for these figures so far, um, to me, it's no question now. This one just looks absolutely fantastic. While I was excited they were adding CGI figures to the Masterverse toy line, it wasn't super excited about it. But now that I have it in hand, now I can just look at this thing and uh, just pose it with my own hands. It just looks fantastic, but really excited to have this one. And I may just focus on getting Masterverse versions of the CGI characters from now on because it looks that much better than the regular retail release. And last, let's look at the CGI Skeletor. Between the CGI looks for He-Man and Skeletor, I like the Skeletor design. And it looks like they went all out for this figure. Um, again, love the artwork. Uh, looks just like he does in the cartoon series. Um, it looks Nate Bart-esque, but I don't know if he did it or not. I probably have to double check that. But if he did, uh, it's up to his usual standard of great quality. Whoever did it, it looks very, very good. This figure is even bigger than the He-Man in package. Let's see, let's get him out of here. All right, at first glance, I thought it looked way bigger than the He-Man, and it is uh, to a certain extent, like his shoulders, and it may just be the armor that they use here, um, but the Skeletor is bigger than the He-Man, which is saying something, the He-Man is large as well. Uh, in terms of all the detail that I'm seeing here on the figure, it all looks really nice. Um, again, I loved the regular retail release, but you know, it's just a, you know, a kid's toy, uh, essentially. So a lot more paint detail that we're seeing here, a lot more purples than just the regular casted plastic purple that we got on the retail figure. And it really shines through here, makes it look super premium in hand. I really dig what they did with his bone arm. We're actually getting extra articulation, which I'm surprised most of them usually just cast it in a solid piece of plastic, but we're actually getting the wrist ball jointed articulation here. I will say, I wish they would have just casted the bottom half of his fore or his skeleton half of his forearm in the yellow plastic it is painted you can see it in camera uh, but it does kind of just look a little bit off color when they are right next to each other probably better if this was just casted in that yellow plastic instead of painting over you know probably what i assume is purple plastic but other than that i think it looks really really good the sculpting looks really good the hoods can sometimes it makes it difficult to pose the head in different positions and that that is true here you kind of get a little bit without it starting to look off 
Um, but still, I really like the look and the sculpt of the head sculpt and the hood is just a part of the figure. Maybe if you made it like super soft, it would have worked a little bit, but you have to do this one in plastic versus soft goods. It's just like whenever the Star Wars team does the Epper these days, the soft goods robe over the head just doesn't look right. It never looks right. Uh, and I gotta say one problem with mine is my ankles are locked up. I can't really get them to move into a position that I think will be able to stand this figure up all that well so that'll take some i'll probably have to use the old uh heating it up trick to get some movement out of it but it's definitely locked up right out of the package but the figure itself looks really good in terms of accessories he's got two closed fists as well and it's nice you're getting his skeleton hand as well as his normal hand i love that we painted uh, his nails there and then his havoc staff is so freaking cool i love that they added the chain to it all of the paint detail it just looks really really neat again it's a little bit warped out of the package but you know a little bit of heat gun action or some hot water probably be able to get this thing back into shape um, but I absolutely love the Havoc staff that they added to this Skeletor. But wow, the two CGI figures, I'm really impressed with what they accomplished here. And I think for a lot of the fans of the CGI show, you've been holding off on buying the regular retail toys because they are very toy-ish. Uh, I think you finally have some great releases that look fantastic, look like they're jumping right off the screen, especially for the He-Man. The Skeletor looks a little bit different in person than what I, at least to my own eyes, saw on screen. But I love all the extra purples here. I love all the paint detail and uh, the he-man just looks absolutely fantastic i think he's the better of the two here but really i i'm excited that we're getting these in the masterverse line i hope for a lot more all right now it's time to pick my fave of the wave wave five of masterverse definitely impresses and as i asked in the beginning of this video will it continue the success of improving wave after wave and i think it does i love the fact that we're getting different characters from different properties within the history of masters of the universe and each one i think is a really really good action figure so this one is a really tough one for me to pick my fave of the wave really i think the he-man the zodak and the catra could all be winners for fave of the wave oh man i maybe i'll have to go between he-man and catra I, I think i gotta go i think i gotta go with he-man here i think just the paint applications the way it looks like it's just jumping right off the screen really impresses me about this figure and the fact that they had it with these more top heavy proportions that we saw in the cartoon show but still have it be a functional action figure uh, i think is a really good thing but honestly every single figure from this wave is fantastic really excited about this princess of power entry new attorney continues to impress and overall a fantastic wave from mattel definitely gets the geek dad life by rating i'd like to thank the people that make this show possible my patrons you can find a full list of them right here if you'd like to help this channel grow become a patron today at patreon.com slash geek dad life definitely check out some of the other videos on my channel like this one that youtube wants you to check out and one of my more recent videos and until next time hasta luego and goodbye